Uh, we've been following this breaking news for you, this high-rise fire on the 27th floor. Joni Lum is now live at the scene. Let's get the latest update from her. Joni, what can you tell us? Good morning. Anyone who's uh, driving down Lakeshore Dr Drive saw so many emergency vehicles up and down the inner drive. We are outside the building where there was a 3 311 alarm fire. Down there you can see some of the civilians and firefighters who are still at the door. We're told that this fire was on the 27th floor. Some people remain in the building. They didn't want to evacuate everyone, but they did evacuate some of the floors. I've been seeing people hanging off balconies. We do know that one firefighter is in critical condition, another uh, firefighter injured at this time. But talking to Val, who was, uh, came down a couple of blocks. You heard the sirens this morning. Uh, what did you see when you got here? Uh, yeah, about an hour ago, there was so many sirens that I walked a block down and then it just, you know, you could see the flames shooting out of one of the floors higher above, somewhere around the 22nd or 27th floor. And the fire trucks just kept coming, the ambulances. And about 15 minutes ago, they brought out somebody on a stretcher and about 25 firefighters were around the stretcher and medics working on someone and um, I think that's when everybody took a pause that this is really serious and it's super sad. I mean, there has to be, I don't know, 50 fire trucks and ambulances around here. The neighborhood's devastated. Yeah, you could read the mood when they came out that whoever was on that stretcher was seriously injured. Yeah, and you could hear a firefighter walked away with tears in his eyes and you know. So they worked on him, uh, then they put him in an ambulance? They put him in the ambulance and they were still working on him and then they took him away about five minutes later and that was about 20 minutes ago and this fire has been going on for more than an hour. You know as a former reporter that when there's a high-rise fire they do call out a lot of resources. Uh, there are a lot of trucks, a lot of hoses and a lot of firefighters here. Yeah and typically when it, it, it happens and then most everybody comes you see a big presence and then all of a sudden the presence goes away but these firefighters keep coming down the street with their hoses. In fact, they just are trying to find another water source around the corner, as you saw. They don't have enough water in the building, it looks like, so they're tapping into another building's water source. So it's major. Yes, the fire, fire trucks are mostly in the front that we can see, but it looks like they are trying to mobilize to the back of the building as well. Yeah, I could see that too. It's, 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 this is, and everyone that's lived here forever, I'm new to the area, said they've never seen anything like this in the whole time they've ever lived here. The response is incredible. Just yesterday, we lost a firefighter who was in a fire. Now this situation, I guess that's why people are feeling what you just described. I, I think so. I think this, well, I, I love the Chicago people. They come and they rally and um, they'll do it again. I can sense your concern, Val. Thanks so much. We just saw runaway hose right behind you where they were trying to tap into the, the standpipe of the building. Uh, it's tense here. There are a lot of firefighters out on the street running around. You can see how many hoses there are. We are told that the firefighter is in very critical condition at the hospital. At one point, uh, they had a mayday. We don't know if that's been resolved. Uh, and they lost the elevators. Of course, you don't use an elevator in a fire like this. They wanted some people to stay in the building so that they wouldn't crowd the stairwells. Um, but it appears they are still badly. Uh, I'm Joni Lum reporting live. Now back to you.